Hi, this is Tom Oding at the University of Iowa. I'm going to show you an interesting case that we did recently. It's actually two cases in one on the same patient. Here you can see we've got a patient that had severe blunt trauma. We're doing a pyridomy in the area of the iridodialysis. We're first using the keratome and just partially going in just enough so that we can later use the anterior vitrector here. Use some non-preserved kenalog and we're doing the anterior vitrectomy here in the area where some vitreous is coming around with loose zonules. We're going to initially place this iris hook onto the iris to pull back to keep the iris out of the way in the area of the iridodialysis, opening the incision fully with the 3.0 millimeter keratome. Now we're going to do a sideways arsenal shell where we first put some viscoat in the area of the weak zonules and then place the cohesive to force that viscoat over in the area of the weak zonules. We're going to take the cystotome and tear away from the good zonules, get this, cyst this started, and then bring it around with utrata forceps. We're hydrodissecting and hydrodelineating, and this soft nucleus has come forward. Now we're going to catch the anterior capsule with the iris hook so we get some additional support in the area of the weak zonules. Now we're using the irrigation aspiration unit and we're removing this soft lens. But you can see we caught some vitreous here which has come around the weak zonules and so we're going to end up finishing this up with the anterior vitrectomy instrument. We place some stain here and we're removing uh, any residual vitreous that we detect in that area. Now we're going to remove the residual material uh, with the anterior vitrectomy. We put the cut rate low. Here's an Optech 13 millimeter capsular tension ring. We're going to place this and we're placing it so that the initial tension is away from the good zonules as the ring goes around. You can see as it releases here, it doesn't quite get into position. It gets caught by the iris, but we're going to use a Sinsky hook to get it into its final position. So now we're placing a uh, single piece acrylic lens with the capsular tension ring, which is nicely centered now and appears to need no additional support uh, of the uh, bag. We're removing uh, this uh, iris hook and now we're going to repair the iridodialysis. We're going to use two tenoproline sutures. We're using this long curved needle. And what we're going to try to do is pass this through the incision that we use for the phaco without catching any corneal tissue. We're going to catch just a little bit of the most peripheral iris and then we're going to come through uh, the sclera here. And this is about a millimeter or so back from the limbus. And now we've got to be very careful as we place the second uh, pass with the other needle that we do not catch any uh, corneal tissue. So you can see that I'm using the 0.12s to separate the cornea clearly there. Once again, we catch a little bit of this um, iris tissue and then we place it uh, through the sclera about one and a half millimeters or so back. Sometimes it's hard to catch uh, that little bit of peripheral iris. You don't want to have this uh, suture be too close to the other pass because it's very hard to bury the knot if you get them too close. So we're going to go ahead and place two of these. Uh, you can see that the uh, suture passed nicely all the way through the, um, uh, the incision so we didn't catch any corneal tissue by mistake. So now we're going to place uh, the other uh, suture here. Don't tie it down until you've placed the other side. It's just much easier uh, to um, pass these without uh, having the other side tied down. Now we're going to go 311 uh, with this tenoproline. And usually the tenoproline will, will nicely rotate. Tenoproline is plenty good for iridolysis repair. Uh, it's probably uh, not good enough if you're going to suture uh, a haptic um, because it tends to break uh, when uh, suturing something under tension like a haptic. So now we're rotating that knot such that that is uh, buried uh, inside the eye and doing that on both sides. And then we're going to um, reapproximate that uh, conjunctiva suture the incision. And now uh, we're three months later and uh, the patient had complained uh, of the irregular pupil and it complained of uh, significant glare and so we're going to go ahead and suture um, in the area of the injured uh, iris sphincter. We're just going to place one uh, suture with tenoproline. Again we're using that long curved needle. And we're going to place uh, this uh, suture uh, such that it goes through the cornea, through the iris, through the iris on the other side, and then comes out uh, anywhere. It doesn't really matter where it comes out. And uh, we, you can see we've got a nice pass there. We're going to go in and uh, make sure that the free end is completely through 
the paracentesis, so we have the free end on one side is completely through. Uh, we're going to cut off that needle and then we're just going to make sure that that free end easily goes through the paracentesis because we don't want to accidentally tie the corneal tissue to the iris. So now we have a free end which is coming out. We're going to tee up that free end so that it's easy to grab. You can see we're sort of curling it around over there and place the uh, end of it so that you can easily grab it. And now we're going to pull the loop uh, through from the other side using a Kugel hook. And we're going to set up the loop so we can wrap it around and we're going to wrap the iris side around three times uh, and then we're going to go and grab that free end that we teed up over there for us to grab fairly easily and now we're going to pull that free end through those three loops and we're going to pull on that side on one free end and pull on the other side of the free end the knot goes inside the eye and you can see how it cinches down uh, the uh, iris nicely and we're going to do this again two more times what I usually go is uh, three times and then two and then two uh, and that's usually um, plenty good. So here's uh, the second time uh, that we go. And you can see a little bit better magnification. You can see pulling it through the loop and then pulling the two free ends and the knot goes inside the eye. And then you cu cut off um, the ends of that knot with uh, duet uh, scissors. We're going to add some more myocol here. You can see how the pupa comes down fairly nicely and the patient was pretty pleased with the cosmetic appearance and she had less glare. This is Tom Bodie at the University of Iowa. Thank you very much.